Personal log, Earth date, March 12th, 2019, today in space. I've been obsessed with the idea of balance lately, the kind of balance you find in life and in your work and with your health and in your relationships, where you are in control of the chaos. For me, the obsession of balance is with my own productivity and efficiency. You can't do a podcast, run a 3D printing idea workshop, work a full-time job, be in a healthy relationship, and spend time with family and friends without having balance. Finding out when to rest, when to push myself, and when to refocus my efforts when things change, it's all part of actively trying to find balance in my life, and it's an endless journey. This obsession with balance has been fueled by two audiobooks I've been listening to recently by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin called Extreme Ownership and the Dichotomy of Leadership. There's also, they're also available as books, and there's also Jocko's podcast, Jocko Podcast, and they cover similar ideas, all of which I recommend to you. In all this content, they stress the idea of extreme ownership and that everything has a dichotomy, a balance. It's not the binary world we think it is. It's more complicated. Life's more complicated than that. And what you can do is prepare and learn so you're ready when it's time to take action. So it got me thinking about the balance of science and engineering until... A little while ago, I thought the two were the same, but recently I've been thinking about how different they are. And it wasn't until I was reading a few pages of a book on one of the creators of the microchip that I realized the balance of science and engineering. Science is the gathering of knowledge. Engineering is the application of that knowledge. Science is like learning everything you can about the question at hand or the subject you're interested in. Engineering is exactly learning exactly what you need to answer the question and solve the problem. A scientist is gathering knowledge through the scientific method to expand our understanding. Scientists are fishing for knowledge with a wide net, basically. An engineer is solving a problem using gained knowledge to find patterns and accomplish a goal in a set amount of time or at a certain cost. Engineers have to be super focused on the goal and effective towards reaching it. Another way of looking at this balance is that science is theory and engineering is practice. You can't be all theory because some theories don't work in the real world, and you also can't be all practice or you'll never learn anything new or be able to adjust when things change. It's like using the same play in basketball even when it's not working anymore. You may have that play mastered, but if someone can exploit the weakness, you got to change what you're doing and learn more plays. As an engineer myself, I go through ebbs and flows of gathering knowledge and then applying that knowledge. When I'm at my best as an engineer, my focus is on solving the problem, so I'm learning just enough to solve the problem in front of me. I'm not spending a lot of time learning all the various aspects of it, which I tried to do in college a lot. But, of course, there's still times where I nerd out and go a little bit too deep down the black hole of learning and don't get as much accomplished. But... That's being human, and the more I've spent time obsessing over this idea of balance, the more I'm convinced being human is a balance. I know that I'm not the first one to say this and won't be the last, but this has really got me thinking. And I'll use a personal example, how I approach 3D printing jobs for AG3D, which, for those of you that don't know, is a 3D printing service where we bring your ideas into reality with 3D printing. So... We get job quests from people who want to 3D print lots of different things. There's almost never the same thing, customer to customer. I'm at my balance of science and engineering when I'm learning just enough to effectively develop forward with that specific project. So let's say there's a customer who wants to coat their 3D printed parts to either smooth the surface or seal them for water. I do some research, learn what I need to put the coat on, figure out costs and pricing and get it done. Do I need to learn everything about the molecular interaction of the sealer and how it seals in between the layers of the 3D printed part? No, but I need enough knowledge to know how to apply the product, use it safely, and make sure I can guarantee the results I promise my customers. Plus, if I spend too much time figuring everything out, I've spent too much time and thus too much money, and so then I can't make any profit. And with almost every job being different, you really need to focus on not spending too much time learning. You also see the balance of science and engineering in the space industry. And you don't have to look far. Just take SpaceX and NASA, for example. Both of them make use of a balance of science and engineering to accomplish their goals. And that's really the point of my obsessive thought on balance. How does that balance help them accomplish their goals? 
you know, for me, if I'm not setting goals and accomplishing them, then the uneven balance of my life, the chaos, eats me alive. For both NASA and SpaceX, if they don't achieve their goals effectively, they might cease to get funding or cease to even exist as a company. So let's start with NASA. You can find the NASA mission statement and their goals online, and they are an organization funded by the U.S. government. So there are a lot of goals and missions. I've been focused on the mutual goal of both NASA and SpaceX, which is enabling human space travel. So NASA's goals for human space travel states, we will establish a permanent human presence in space. NASA is built like a science-gathering machine and definitely rates heavy on the science-to-engineering balance. Their approach, as viewed from the outside, as I don't work at NASA, seems to be to gather as much information as possible in as many different directions and topics as possible. And that makes sense. The, The universe is, for all we know, infinite and still expanding, so we're already behind in knowing everything and losing ground every Earth second. But... Just because they are science or theory heavy doesn't mean NASA has no engineering. There are amazing engineers doing the impossible all the time, like the recently retired Opportunity rover that was designed for 90 days and survived 15 years. But how many opportunities does NASA get to launch a mission? Not many. And maybe that's part of the reason why NASA is so science heavy, because funding doesn't come that easy, and research is easier to get than mission funding. Evidence of NASA's imbalance with engineering can be seen after the space shuttle was retired, and we had to start a new untested technology that was capable of sending humans into space. Restarting something like that requires not only a massive amount of knowledge, which NASA had, but speed. It's certainly the case with the space launch system that dates have been pushed and things get more expensive. That's where their engineering balance is off. Very good at gaining knowledge, but not enough practice at getting technology really quickly. Granted, I realize that there are a lot of other factors that can cause something like the SLS to be delayed, like underfunding, improper use of resources, etc. I know. Hell, there was plenty of that engineering know-how when we were in the space race to the moon, but that was a different time with different motivations. Two countries were in the middle of an ultimate showdown of supremacy, trying to gain the ultimate high ground, the moon. And NASA was funded as defense because it was a matter of national security. But you can't really simulate that same determination artificially. I'm looking at what I see as the big 10,000-foot view of the situation and taking the approach that, at the end of the day, NASA has not been able to advance or restart human reach into space by themselves. Luckily, they figured out that companies could get it done faster than they could and Launch America and the Commercial Crew Program was developed. This brings us to SpaceX with their engineering-heavy balance approach to space science. SpaceX is structured vertically, unlike NASA, meaning SpaceX builds almost all of their technology in-house. They are built to solve problems quickly. Their focus is to accomplish their goal as fast and as cost-effective as possible. And that's a stark difference to NASA, who has multiple locations across the entire United States, as well as many vendors that work on various parts of the mission. This means a lot of shipping, time spent waiting for parts to go from building to building, vendors building and shipping their parts. By the end of it, so much is spent on keeping the ballet of people involved going that it's no wonder that it gets so expensive and why people thought reusable rockets were nonsense. I mean, if NASA couldn't do it, why could a private company? And one of the things I love about SpaceX's engineering heavy approach is that they take every opportunity to apply knowledge to solve problems. If, if you look at their Falcon 9 development, they used commercial launches they were getting paid for to test their technology development. They attempted to land every Falcon 9 mission possible on land and sea, making small adjustments each time. Launch first, gather knowledge, adjust, launch again, and test it further. They are effectively learning what they need to accomplish their goal, which, by the way, SpaceX's human space travel goal is to enable people to live on other planets. Now, while SpaceX is seemingly super effective at advancing the human race towards living interplanetarily, we haven't discussed the downside to their balance. Essentially, it boils down to this. When you take a fast approach with applying knowledge, there's always the concern that you haven't learned enough and something fails. And in the case of human space travel, that means people die. The good thing for SpaceX, as I was talking to a friend about this week, is that 
they've already had a few failures and aren't going into their first crewed missions overconfident. Now, back in 2015, during the CRS-7, when a strut that holds a helium bottle structurally failed in the rocket's liquid hydrogen tank, it overpressurized and burst, blew up the rocket mid-flight. In 2016, they had a launch pad failure during fueling where some perforations in the tank liners caused solid and liquid oxygen to build up, cause friction, and explode it right on the launch pad. But after that, SpaceX has had a tremendous run and seems to have a healthy balance according to their launch record since then, which from January 2017 to March 12th is 30 for 30. And their most recent success, number 30, is the first Crew Dragon launch, DM-1, or Demo-1, where the first version of the Dragon capsule that will send humans into space was mission-tested. The Crew Dragon docked with the ISS and returned to Earth safely, completing all of NASA's tests and showcasing they are ready for human spaceflight. And that's where the balance comes back. We have two powerhouses of science and engineering, and they're working together, complementing each other. Now, I've said it before, this new role that NASA is playing is powerful as the knowledge and science beacon of human space travel, guiding companies to develop technologies we need for human spaceflight. That is the position that NASA seems best suited for, like the Starfleet Federation in Star Trek. Things like Launch America, where NASA can fund companies to compete and develop technologies for them. These projects enable those companies like Boeing and SpaceX to do it cheaper and faster. And now these companies are able to apply the knowledge NASA has already gathered to test their spacecraft under NASA's safety conditions. That's an amazing balance and a strong position for human spaceflight and human life on other planets to become a reality. It says a lot about the world we live in today. How many things we have going on in our lives, the amount of chaos we can undergo... Achieving balance, or at least working on your own balance, can make your life or your journey less chaotic. Learning when to put the device down, when to rest, when to prove yourself, and when to join a team to accomplish mutual goals and complement each other to become stronger as a unit, these things are all important and all part of a balance, as I see it in the 21st century, that can lead us into an interplanetary human future. Now I'll go back and continue working on my own balance, and I hope you find yours as well. Thanks for staying with us until the end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There are some exciting missions coming up in this incredible year space. There's another Falcon Heavy launch slated for April, and the first crewed Dragon capsule in late summer, which means they're actually going to have humans on board, but expect pushes to ensure safety. Uh, There's also a Boeing test where the CST-100 spacecraft will be robotically controlled for 30 days. And assuming all goes well, we may see their first crewed mission maybe before the end of this year. And I do want to point out that I do have a bias for SpaceX, but that doesn't mean I don't consider Boeing space as important. In fact, I'm very excited to see what Boeing space will do with the CST-100. I know a few people who in some way or another have worked on the CST-100, and Boeing has done a great job of recapturing the best of the Apollo and Space Shuttle era to create a spacecraft that can enable humans to travel across the solar system. Boeing is also essentially making the space launch system for NASA. For me, SpaceX just has a special something extra for me that I find appealing. But Enough about my bias. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast either on iTunes, Stitcher, not Spotify just yet. Uh, But you can also get the video aspect of the show on our YouTube channel. Subscribe there and click the bell to get updated when we release another episode. We'll continue to cover more on this amazing year of space in 2019, where we'll see the dominance of reusable spacecraft, the development of SpaceX's Starship, and the start of Launch America. A big congratulations to Israel and Space IL for launching their Bereshit spacecraft, and it's on its way to land on the moon. There was a great selfie image of Earth that you should go check out that came from the Bereshit spacecraft. Uh, If you're all listening to it, Google it. It's worth it. There's a lot of amazing things going on in the universe, even though in our day and age it may seem like it's all insanity. It is insane, but there's a lot of great things happening, and striving for a fantastic future. There's a lot of power in that, so keep your head up, 
find your balance, and look to the future. Have a great day, and make sure to spread love and spread science.